responsible for getting motivation happening and so forth down here at the uh, GM Owners Day for, for numerous years is the current president of the WA uh, Holden Owners Club, Dennis Claridge. Um, thanks for having us along here today and you've got a, an excellent spread of vehicles. Yeah, no, we've done uh, very well this year. We've got uh, just over 300 vehicles and right across the range, predominantly Holdens, but uh, there's a, a lot of the other ones for people to come and have a look at and uh, it's been very good so far. There's a lot of people coming through the gates and it's been terrific. Well, being a GM Owners Day, it's something that uh, has been put together. You said you've been involved since, I think, 88, was it? Yeah, I've been involved with 88. It's uh, a combination of the WA Holden Club and the Chevrolet Car Club of WA. Uh, we get together every two years and sort of put together today to raise money for the Association for the Advancement of Brain Injured Children. And to date, I think we've raised well over $56,000 for them. All right, and then um, adding on to that today's thing, and as I say, it looks like beautiful weather, so it's brought out a, a good mix of vehicles, people and all that sort of thing. It and certainly has. Um, well, thanks obviously go to Channel 9 as well because they've done a lot of uh, advertising through a peelathon for it because uh, we've been linked with a peelathon this year and I think that's brought in a lot more people. The weather's absolutely magnificent. And there's uh, nothing that anyone can complain about. It's certainly not too hot or anything. So. Well, being GM owners, uh, it's not just Holdens and not just Chevs. You've also got the, the Buicks and the um, Cadillacs. Uh, that's right. That's, that's right across the range. I mean, uh, we've even got uh, a couple of our members have brought in an Opal Senator and, a, and an Opal Monza, which is a little bit unusual, especially well, the, to see over here. Yeah, the European League. The European League of the, uh, the GM brand. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, right across the range is the range of Corvettes. There's, uh, there's basically everything. Well, there's a lot of clubs out there that have got their various little groups and displays and so forth too, and it's, uh, it's an ideal time for, for clubs to get together and uh, show their, their unity behind the... Uh, well, yeah, it certainly is. I mean, w without that sort of thing, I mean, uh, it does help the car movement, in, especially in WA, because that's where we are and that's where we've got to help it as well. So days like this uh, do tend to bring the clubs out, uh, show off their cars, and gives uh, people some magnificent vehicles to have a look at. Well, I know one that I spotted over uh, the very back of uh, the other side there is one that's come over from Queensland with a, uh, a big block, uh, being a HTHG type thing from memory. I know uh, they're coming from all over Australia to get to here, so people must know about it. Yeah, well, it's uh, in the past it has been in a few of the national magazines, um, so people are well aware of it, and usually we start getting phone calls and queries regarding the show anything up to 12 to 18 months before the show actually starts. So sort of people are just wanting to know when it's on. So it is quite popular. Now, uh, another one that's uh, sitting up there as a club display of their own is the A9X Club of uh, WA. Now, uh, I'm told that this year marks the uh, 25th anniversary of the A9X. That's right, yeah, it is the 25th uh, anniversary of the release of the A9X and they've actually put on a very magnificent display. Um, a couple of special motor vehicles there, historic race cars. And I know one there that's the... Uh, the ex uh, Wayne Negus yes, Marlborough Commodore, yeah, which, uh, uh, sorry, Tirana, which we had on, and um, probably about third or fourth show that we ever went to air with. That's right, yeah. It's been especially brought up from York uh, just for, for today. It doesn't really get out that much. And the other two uh, cars, we won't mention the uh, cigarette brand advertising on the side of them, but uh, they're a couple of the old race cars from uh, uh, back then, yeah. We've got a few hot rods over the other side with the ASRF stand, and uh, you know, much along the lines of what the, uh, the old Ford Day has, of being the mm. GM Owners Day, they've got to be a GM vehicle with GM power and all that side of things and it just does really show how many of those hot rods out there are really Fords though, doesn't it? Well, I suppose it does, yeah, but uh, these ones are actual GM vehicles because uh, the, uh, the hot rod boys did the right thing by us. Uh, the Buick guys next door to them just about, they put on a, a real impressive display there and I think it was a 1910 that was parked over there. Yep, probably the uh, earliest car here today? It is the earliest car here today, it's uh, Les Woodruff's. Uh, the Buick boys are actually celebrating their 100th year, which is actually next year. So they've put uh, a, a good display on this year. Unfortunately, there's no show for them next year, so they thought they'd bring it forward a year and, uh, and basically celebrate the, the 100th anniversary of Buick. Then to go to the other extreme, we've got the, uh, the new Monaro that's just come out um, up there in the Goldie Holden display. Yes, uh, there's qu actually there's quite a few of uh, the CV8s out here at the, at the moment. Um, there's one particular one that's in the Holden Club display, which is quite a unique vehicle. It's uh, one of only two actually produced, uh, which has uh, gone to our Bianti models man over here. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a habit of that, isn't he, getting all the rare ones? He certainly does. I mean, I think he acquired the, the very first one when they were actually released over here. I mean, uh, his was the, the first, first uh, road-registered one in WA, and uh, I think he has something going with Holden. So. 
but I think what he wants, he gets. <laughs> Well, uh, this type of day too, you cater for everybody that's here. It's a family type day. We've got the bouncy castles, you've got food outlets, you know, a few trade stands, and I see one of our uh, or our major sponsor actually, WA Suspensions. They've also got a tent there. Yeah, it it's really is a mammoth effort to put on a day like this. People say it's only a one-day event, but it's uh, well, two years of planning to make that one-day event. Well, one-day event uh, to some people, it's uh, it's a lot of time and effort and. Uh, and I've got to thank, I mean, especially the committee that was behind me. Uh, they put a lot of time into it. I mean, it, it, it's one of those things, especially if you're working full time, you just don't uh, realise how much it is until you get onto something like this. And it's months and months of actual preparation for six hours of actual car showing. Yeah, and uh, it's like any of these events, though, without the volunteers, and uh, without the sponsors, they couldn't take place. So, no, you know, on right. behalf of all those people that are wandering around here, got their cars on display, just or just having a look, thanks to all those that do work behind the scenes to put on an event like this. And I know there's another event that we've just started uh, for the first time. It's another one supporting the young kids. Is one that took place down uh, Medina, I think it was, a couple of weeks ago. Steve McGrath caught up with them. Was at Bassendine, I think, the time before that Claremont. That's right. And you put it together in conjunction with the Chef Owners Club of WA. We do indeed. Tell us a bit about the event. I've given out the date there. It's taken place at Bassanine Oval. Plenty of space. There will be indeed. Uh, it's an event held every two years. I think it's been going since about 1988. Uh, as you've mentioned, it's held in conjunction with the uh, Chevrolet Car Club and ourselves, the Holden Car Club of WA. Um, I'm involved with the organising committee this year, but uh, the driving forces of the of the event for the since '88, I guess, have been uh, Dennis Claridge of our club and Peter Taylor from the Chevrolet Club, and they're still the the, the hard-working wheels this year. Uh, we're just fringe helpers, but uh, yep. Uh, the event, getting back to the event, it's a uh, 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 as I said, a two-yearly, a, two a biannual event. Uh, it. Um, all proceeds go to the uh, the advancement of the brain injured children uh, ch uh, brain injured children society, which is a very worthy cause. I'm sure you'll all agree. Um, I think we're up around 60, I think we've donated so far about $60,000 uh, to that cause and last year was a great show, uh, I think we had about 20000 in proceeds to, to give, uh, sorry not last, last year, the last show. So we're looking